Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, we are in for a really special treat today. I feel like I say this about every episode, but every story we get to share is so important. This week's episode, this week's story we're going to share with you, we're actually going to do in two parts. We had the first time experience of something brand new on Now That's Something Good. You're going to hear me tell it to you in a minute, but I'm so excited about it. I'm going to tell it to you twice. This was the first time that we actually got to record not one guest, not two guests, not three guests, not four guests, but five guests in one time. The audio quality might be a little different than what you're used to, but I think you're going to enjoy it as you get to hear these conversations. And not only did we have five guests at one time, we also had a studio audience, which was just a lot of fun. Really our heart, you know our heart around here if you've been around. So we love to share stories and we really do believe that there's so many extraordinary things that happen out of the everyday ordinary moments and so much power and so much good that comes from just sitting around tables, sitting in living rooms, going out to coffee, having conversations with people and learning about their life and sharing our story. And so today we're going to hear some from some friends of ours. They work for a ministry called Freedom House in a little tiny town in Holcomb, Missouri. They are in the incredible ministry heart business of helping people find freedom, helping them find restoration, and ultimately, even though they might have some other hiccups and hangups, helping them find freedom in Jesus. And it's amazing. I know you're going to be really blessed by our conversation today. In part one, we're going to really hear from the main leaders of Freedom House in Holcomb, Missouri, Gary and Susan Smith. So here's my conversation with my friends at Freedom House. Welcome back to Now That's Something Good podcast. Today is a really special day. We don't have just one guest, not two guests. I have five guests with me today. It's so exciting. We have some good friends from Freedom House. They're going to tell you a lot more, but they're here. And this is also a first for the podcast because not only do we have multiple guests, we actually have a live studio audience. Can you all say hi? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. So we're just knocking all kinds of firsts with you guys. So thanks Amen. for coming along, being here. I'm going to start with Gary and Susan. I want you guys, if you can each introduce yourself so everybody can kind of hear your voice and I think they'll tell the difference between your two voices, but identify who's talking that will help us. So Gary, why don't you, you start us off. Tell us a little bit about who you are. I'm Gary Smith. I'm the Assistant Executive Director of uh, Freedom House, and I'm thankful to be in here tonight to share a little bit about what the Lord's done in my life. Love it. And I am Susan Smith, and I am Gary's other half, and just blessed to be like the uh, house mom of the ministry is really my main role, and um, I'm blessed every every day, and, and I just can't believe that the Lord gave me the life that He gave me, and it's awesome. I love it. Well, take us back and tell us, Gary and Susan, and however you want to share, tell us a little bit about what Freedom House is for people listening. They're like, we don't know what it is. Tell us what it is and its purpose. Okay. So we, we are part of a bigger ministry called Mission Teens. It's been around for 53 years. It's, we've got several of these, um, uh, we call them an 8- to 10-month Christian discipleship training program. Yeah. Um, an easier term for people that, that don't understand that is maybe like a Christian rehab. And so we help people that are 18 and older that have drug, alcohol, emotional problems, anybody that has just hit the bottom and and says, I need something different, and we know what that is, and that different is Jesus. He's the fixer. He's the answer, and if they're willing to come to our program, then we've built this wonderful house and safe place where they can just shut out the world and um, commit to learning about themselves and who God created them to be. Yeah. Um, learning who they are in Christ and learning uh, life skills, but but not just like how to do dishes or how to make a bed, but how to look to the Lord when you're frustrated mm -hmm. about having to make your bed. Yeah. So um, we just direct everyone to Jesus. It's a free program. It's, it's in a little town called Holcomb, Missouri. There's <laughs> only like 500 people in the town. And what the Lord, we opened in 2016, and what he's done in the past five years is... Uh, 
amazing. It's a miracle. All glory to God that um, we've had over 400 people come through and uh, not all of them have graduated, but um, seeds were planted and the Lord's going to water them and we're, it's just amazing. Yeah. Truly. You said 400 people since 2016. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that is, that's crazy. That's a huge number. That is yeah. a huge number. Um, Gary, I'm going to ask you, I know you guys have your own story to how you got to Freedom House. So why don't I kind of start with you and then we'll get to where your and Susan's life kind of comes together. But Gary, if you're willing, tell us just a little bit about your past, your life, and how you got to where you're at now. <laughs> well, I'd love to. Um, back in 2005, <clears throat> I come from a broken family. Yeah. Uh, who later come to know the Lord and, and mm-hmm. kind of prayed for me, and I found the Lord. But uh, what started the whole thing was I spent most of my life thinking that I didn't have a purpose, and I always thought that I was a mistake. And uh, I cried out to the Lord, and wound up on a uh, bus going down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We have a center down there. And I went down there, and after I was there for about three days, um, I felt like I heard the Lord say in my heart that He just wanted to love me. Hmm. And, you know, it's it's been all these years later, and He's still loving me. And uh, the guy that directed that center's name was Bill Murphy, and his wife's name was Terry. And after I was there for about two or three weeks, I looked and I said, That's what I want. I want what they have. And, you know, we're supposed to reflect who Christ is. Yeah. And uh, I saw the Jesus in them, and that's what I wanted. And I said, Lord, I want what they have. And so I walked through a lot of things and uh, a lot of discipline and uh, learned to to get a relationship with Jesus. And uh, as as I uh, spent my two and a half years there, the Lord moved me to Paragould, Arkansas, under uh, some people there. And I spent about... I think it was nine years there, and I didn't know that I had uh, a music talent. So <laughs> the the lady and her husband that ran the place uh, would sing a lot, and uh, she would have me come up and sing with her. And she said, do you think you could play a guitar? And I'm like, well, I don't know, because my dad was a musician and my okay. grandma's a musician. Oh, wow. Um, and so after I sang a little bit, she said, well, why don't you try this? And, and well, you know, I, naturally I didn't want anything to do with it at first <laughs> because I didn't, you know, back then when I was around my family, I didn't know the Lord. Hmm. And so as I fell in love with the Lord, I, I picked the guitar up and uh, I, could just start pl- I just started playing it. Yeah. And yeah. didn't know that I had that type of a gift. And God is using that. And then, uh, you know, I believe when I told the Lord, I want what they have, he, he put Susan in my life. I waited a long, long time for a beautiful, godly woman. And when he put her in my life, it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. We uh, were asked to pray about going and opening a, a ministry in Holcomb, Missouri. And uh, you know what? We said, let us pray about it, and we'll get back to you. And we had some circumstances that came up, and... Uh, well, nevertheless, we prayed through it, and we agreed to do it. So we came over here, and we said, we're going to make the best of this with the Lord. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't no time God started showing up there. And uh, you know, I can remember after we first got there, we uh, had went over to a church service. And then each day when we would get up, we would go to the end of the driveway, and we would pray. And we'd say, God, show us what we're supposed to do. And, you know, we would just turn right and go down and speak to people and tell them what we were doing there. Hmm. And so one day we got back home, and uh, we were just sitting there thinking. And I said, you know what? Maybe we ought to pull the stuff out of the closet and see what we have. So we did. We pulled out some some stuff in the closet. And you want to talk about faith. Uh, I think we said we were going to have a house count of, what, 30? 40. Or 40. Wow. So we had like, I think it was, I don't know, maybe 30-something forks and 30 spoons and 30 knives. And look, we, we left and went down the road and came back, and somebody bought a whole new set of the exact number of the knives and forks that we needed, and they were hanging on the door, and we're like. I love it. Wow. Yeah. So God's all about the detail. Uh, he is, yeah. And you know what? It's it's an open door. Uh, I found out about the ministry through somebody else who had been in the ministry. Yeah. And uh, we we have people that come in all the time, and uh, they 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 come in, they get fed. Um, we expose them to the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
and they leave. They go tell others about it, and then they come. It's by word of mouth. And mm-hmm. since 1969, we've had probably, I'm going to say at least 25, 26,000 people who've wow. come to the Lord. Wow. And a big number of them who have reported back still doing good. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got to it. I wanted the Jesus that someone else had, yeah. and I got it. Yeah. And he blessed my life. That's amazing. Gary, I got to ask you, you said something um, at the beginning when you are sharing your story that you weren't sure if you had a purpose or what your purpose was. Yes. And I think every one of us comes to a point where we struggle with that. We don't know, like we just don't know whether we've walked with the Lord, whether we've grown up in a house with the Lord, whether we've not ever heard the name of the Lord or know Jesus. We struggle with our purpose. There's somebody listening to this, wherever they're listening to it, whenever they're listening to it, that's like, I just, I don't know. I identify with that. Like, I don't know what my purpose is. What encouragement would you give to them or what would you share with them to just kind of help from your own story of you coming to figure out your purpose? Well, I I would suggest if if you're unsure or if you're listening tonight and you you feel that you have no purpose, um, there's one who does does love you and his name is Jesus. And Mm -hmm. sometimes you have to go through things in life uh, to come to the end of yourself. Yeah. So you can find the Lord. And that's that's what had to happen to me. And so I would encourage anybody that's listening, just know this tonight, that there is a Savior and his name is Jesus and Mm -hmm. he really loves you. And if you're going through something tonight, don't give up. It's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, just keep pushing through, and 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 your blessing is is right before you. Yeah, that's good, Gary. So I got to switch gears and ask you about the music thing because one of my favorite things about when I've gotten to come visit you at the Freedom House is your guitar collection. So yes. just pivot for a second <laughs> and talk about. Tell me how many guitars you have and some of the other. In- you have quite the instrument collection at Freedom House. <laughs> I do. Uh, most of those I have acquired uh, through prayer, and I have a wife that loves me a whole lot, and I have the, the Lord. He just really loves me, and He blesses <laughs> me. <laughs> and so, you know, I have this I one that I that I that I have. It's uh, it's the exotic wood uh, Ibanez, and I prayed like for fifteen years for this guitar. Mm. And all of a sudden, I wound up with it. And I'm like, you know, love I had it. to wait a long time and pray a long time, but I collect yeah. guitars. I love them. I love the, I look for the, the richness of the sound in yep. them. Yep. Uh, I collect them. I, I take really good care of them and I glorify yeah. the Lord with them. I love it. And uh, I also uh, had the tendency to bless them to other people at times. I think that's cool. Through the Lord. Yeah, I love it. Well, Gary, you are I've gotten to be in with you guys leading worship and it's always just a blessing to me and such an encouragement to my soul and my spirit what you guys do and you really do have a great gift. So there is a scripture I want to add to that. Yeah, you please, know the, yeah. the word says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Yep. And if you're seeking and uh, diligently seeking the Lord, uh, he'll he'll give you that. And I would say tonight, if you, if you delight yourself in the Lord, you'll want the desires of His heart. Yes, that's good. That is, amen. That's really good, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> They're clapping amen. an amen in the back. You can't hear it. I love it. Studio. Okay, audience. Susan, tell us coming to you. Tell us a little bit of your backstory and how you got to Freedom House and just some of the things the Lord has done in your life over the years. Right. Well, um, I feel. I guess I would say that. Um, I was raised, right? <laughs> it's <laughs> and um I don't know, just some things we allow to happen. Like now yeah. I know that um all things work to the good mm-hmm. for those Amen. that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But when you walk through some things it doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. And um so anyway, I think I spent a lot of years mad at God. Yeah. And, um, you know, we always say at the mission that um, everybody has a story of how they came there and and, and everybody's bottom is different. Mm-hmm. But um, I came to the mission and I had a drug problem, but I didn't have a drug problem. I had a Jesus problem mm-hmm. because I knew who Jesus was, and I didn't want to. I didn't want anything to do with Jesus, yeah. but He wanted something to do with me. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, so I spent a lot of years uh, trying to heal hurt and pain and rejection and bitterness and mm-hmm. unforgiveness uh, with with things of the world that won- were only temporary. Yeah. Until. Um, until it, it really consumed me. Mm-hmm. And um, then uh, I got to the bottom, my bottom, 
and had to say, I need help. And yeah. that's how I got to Mission Teens. And and uh, there was no Freedom House when I got to Mission Teens. <laughs> that came later. But, um, you know, it's just really an act of, like, surrender every day, you know, to say, yeah. hey, I want something better. I want something more. I want mm-hmm. I want that life that's abundant. And um and that's that looks different for everyone too. Yeah. But uh the life that 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 I have now with you know the a husband that loves me. Today's our 10 year anniversary. Woo woo. Uh who would who would have <laughs> ever thought, you know. But um but it, it's just great, you know. And and uh, my heart is uh my heart is for the ministry. I love mm-hmm. what I do. Not uh, you're going to talk to some of the staff. Nobody gets paid. We do this because this is what we're called to do, and yeah. that that's like that's that's a big deal because yeah. um, not because we're saying oh we want to we need some money or something. We're saying that because we we just want you to know that our heart is to help. Yeah, and um, we see people that come in, and and some of them make the program all the way through and they get the life change that they need. Mm -hmm. And some people just come for a day and say, I don't want to be here. And it's super heartbreaking because it's, um, there's just a, we have open beds and there's so many hurting people Mm -hmm. and there's, there's a a way to not hurt anymore. And and it's Jesus, you know? And I just, if I could, if I could say that to everyone, like everybody knows somebody and look, there's, you're not hopeless. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're not hopeless. There's hope in Jesus. And uh, I think a lot of people hear that voice in their head that says, just give up, you're hopeless. And it's a lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a lie. It and so I guess if I had to say something encouraging, it would be to say, Jesus loves everyone. Mm-hmm. Yep. No matter what you've done, no matter what your past, no matter what your story is, he still loves you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he has a plan for you. Absolutely. So... Anyway, that's good, Susan. Tell <laughs> a little more. I love you've said this, but I want to hone out on this because I love this. The heart of Freedom House is that you are not just a normal rehabilitation center. You've said that you know every everybody's biggest problem, everybody's biggest addiction. It could look like drugs or codependency or mental illness or fill in the blank with anything that we anybody can struggle with. But our greatest need at the end of the day is we need Jesus and we need a Savior. But can you just talk a little more about how the the program at Freedom House is different than just a, a normal any right. other rehab center that you're going to call or reach well, out to? Um, our our program is different because uh, one is it's super structured. Yeah. Um, we we tell you when you when you we're going to tell you what time you got to wake up that you have to make your bed. You can only have this many clothes. Yeah. Um, we just want to keep everything super simple. And and like uh, for example, they have to exercise in the morning. It's 15 minutes, and they walk around the building. Yeah. They hate it. <laughs> they hate it. And it's not like they're, you know, doing calisthenics and getting a real workout. It's just really more of an act of obedience yeah. to like first thing in the morning, do something that you hate because you have to. Let's die to your flesh. It's good. Right early in the morning and set the tone for the rest of the day because the, there's a lot of times that, that that there's right and there's wrong and wrong is easier. So um, yes. you got to die to your flesh, and you got to learn to look to the Lord. And it's 15 minutes of your day. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. However, um, you know, we have to give a lot of counsel on it. It's 15 minutes of your day. What else are you going to do, you know? Right, um, right. So Susan, it's just really structured. It's think, just really structured. <laughs> I think you just hit on something for a minute because it's like, none of it, we're like, it's 15 minutes. And you're like, why 15 minutes on Instagram sounds yes. more fun than 15 minutes of walking or more than 15 minutes of getting in God's Word? Yeah. And it's just getting our priorities we, in the right order. We, we tell them that they have to read their Proverbs every day. There's 31 Proverbs. There's yeah. 30 or 31 days in each month. So, yeah. you know, today you read Proverbs 6 and tomorrow, and you just keep doing it over and over for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, that's your, that's your instructions. And read your New Testament. Get to know who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And um, that that's a requirement in our program. They get five and a half hours of Bible study, and they learn life skills because they get... They don't have anything to do when they get there. They just got to like kind of defrag and figure out what we are, you know, what's going on here. And then we start giving them a little bit more responsibility that adds pressure. Yeah. And then the further they get along, the more responsibility and the more privileges they get. 
So it's it's just all it was it was dictated fifty three years ago by the Holy Spirit. We still do the same thing today, the yeah. same schedules, and it works. And we have a ninety percent success rate. <laughs> Amazing. And, and I just I did a little research. If you want me to throw some numbers Please out do, there, Please do, yeah. Okay, so um, like a detox is uh, three hundred to nine hundred dollars a day. <clears throat> okay, and um, and and people think they need a detox, and you know what? We just pray over them. Yeah. Like if you really want your life right, let us just pray over you, and it's free. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, prayer is free. <laughs> yeah. And uh, rehab is um, between uh, twelve. Hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for twenty eight days. Wow! And they have a success rate of four percent. Four percent. So if you, I mean, if you just look at like what is the problem? The problem right. is not drugs. It's you yeah. need Jesus. So wow. we're gonna keep directing you to Jesus. You're gonna ask what they ask. What you know? Oh, can I do this? And we say pray about it. And oh boy, everyone gets mad. But then at some point they start to pray about it <laughs> yeah. and they see that God answers prayers, yeah. even if sometimes God answers no. Right. Because right. he knows what's best for us. But we have people that come in that are um, mothers and um, they've never cooked a meal. Hmm. Yeah. And we have people that come in that are, you know, clearly adults and they've never made their bed. Yeah. So we want to teach them life skills. We want to teach them just to dig it, that the, the Bible has all of the answers. Yeah. And um, just just a better way to live. And then some people feel the call to stay on with us, mm-hmm. which we need that. Yeah. Um, to help run the program. All of these guys with us today have super important jobs. Yeah. And we, we couldn't do what we do without all the people that stay. Right. But, but the other goal is that you get your life changed and you go back home. And, and everybody that you see says... Look what the Lord has done. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like uh, people maybe that weren't good that say, there's something different and I need to know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's such a cool, so. cool story and testimony. <laughs> Gary, say yeah. One more small thing. Absolutely. You was asking me a while ago about how it was that I came to the Lord and how hard it was for me that would encourage somebody tonight. There may be somebody that might be listening that says, well, maybe the Lord doesn't understand what I'm going through, mm-hmm. or maybe you mm-hmm. just don't understand. But let, let me tell you something. He does understand. He became us on the cross. Yes. He died for all of our iniquities. He yeah. died for all of our sins. So God understands what it's you good. may be going through. So yeah. that would be yeah. what I would like to really, really say. No, that's good, Gary. Thank and, you for coming back and saying that. Yeah. That is a good word. And the program is different because everybody that runs the program has been in the program. Yeah. Right. Every single person. So, you know, sometimes the girls are gossiping or something and they're like, you don't understand what it's like living in this room and taking, <laughs> you know, having only seven changes of clothes. And I can say I do understand because, yeah. you know, I I did that too, you yeah. know. So, yeah. uh I think that's kind of unique to to Freedom House or Mission Teens as well. Yeah, that's great. You know, so you guys shared that today is your ten year wedding anniversary, it which is. I'm how <laughs> awesome that you're spending it with us. We feel like that's amazing here on the show. So happy anniversary! Uh, thank you. But tell us, uh, whichever one of you, if you're not filling the story, we love um, relationship stories around here and just good stories in general. So tell us just how you guys met. Because this is, I love this story. <laughs> so I've heard it, but I want everybody else listening oh. to hear it. So tell us how this happened. Because you were not in the same no, mission team area. No, he's pointing at me to yeah. tell it. Um, we, we, really good at he, it. Uh, <laughs> look, we, you know, I came in the ministry looking. I mean, not, I, that wasn't my goal, but I did spend a season where I was like, oh, is it him? Is it him? Like, I would just want to like go to church and it just seemed like the pews were made perfectly for the guy to put his arm around <laughs> the wife, you know? And I'm like, oh, that would be fun, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, anyway, the Lord was like, I need to be enough. And um, and, he, and then he was enough. And uh, whenever I, I really said in my heart, like, you're enough, Lord, mm-hmm. if there's no one besides me and you forever, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And then he threw Gary in the mix and <laughs> we kept we kept running into each other at different uh, banquets and worship conferences, 
and I, I, I really didn't um, like Gary, and he didn't really like me. And then, um, then one of the, somebody in the ministry donated our sister mission in Kentucky, like, um, I don't know, like 30 steer. And so we always say we met over killing cows and, um, <laughs> yeah, I need you to really tell this story because this yeah. is not a normal, like when she was, so, I think I had to ask her, I'm like, wait, 30 steer, like you mean, you mean real cows? Like yeah, this was not like, like real, figurative, like some, this is not some part of speech. This is a real language. Language. Yeah. cows <laughs> and, 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 and the mission, um, like things are supernatural, like, you know, uh, building a house with tools that that only work if you stand on one foot, you know, like that's that's really <laughs> great, but that's what we do. And so if you say to in the mission, because people are always want to do new things, like yeah. does anybody know how to take a motor out of a car? Like five people raise their hand, and the truth is like somebody saw their dad do it. Somebody like watched, used to watch hot rod shows, but nobody really has ever taken a motor out. So that's where we were oh. at when we said, does anybody know how to butcher a cow? And um, everybody was like, yeah, I do. And so we we all like seven centers get to this place with the cows. And what we ended up with was like a coloring book page of a cow with numbers like one on the thigh and two on like the breast. It was crazy, Uh, but, but it worked. And that's, that's what we did. And we had little buckets with numbers and, um, so Susan, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I got no, like, so this is the people listening to this podcast for a while. Be like, I know Sarah's got to ask a question. So like, you mean to tell me, and I don't want to get too graphic or gory on a PG podcast, but like you literally, like you yourself was actually Cutting into this animal, like with yes. the blood we, and the we guts and all the the cows. They were really old, <laughs> and really old. Um, everybody For had their animal part. Lovers, yeah, they were Some, getting you. Somebody <laughs> was like the gun person, and somebody was like the hacksaw oh, person. Man. And okay. I was the driver for a while. Yeah, like I drove yeah. him from the site back to the mission. That was a good job choice. We had freezer paper. That was a, that was really the only real thing that we had that um, oh. we needed. And then we had a bunch of dull knives and a church. <laughs> They didn't donate, but they let us borrow a meat grinder that was like, just like one you would use at home. Yeah. Um, and I think we ground up like 8,000 pounds of meat. Oh, my goodness. Um, and it would smoke, and we would lay hands on it. And by the end, <laughs> there, there, and by so the good. end, there was like rocks and grass, and we were like, just grind it up, you know. And um, <laughs> it wasn't good. It was, it, that was not, was, good. Good. This is, it was not something good. It was not something good. But through that process, um, I think Gary and I developed a different friendship through laughter of, well, this is never going to work. And um, <laughs> nothing so to the bring Lord you together can use like anything. that experience. <laughs> I feel like if you could survive through that, it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, we did. And let me add to that. Oh, no. <laughs> now, this is really good. I'm, I'm going to tell a good part of it. And, and that's good, too. But the, the great thing about it was, is, you know, something that people like these guys that are here tonight, yeah. everybody wants somebody. Yeah. And when you come into a ministry like this and God deals with you for a couple of years and, and yeah. helps you deal with all your garbage and stuff, you, you develop this sense of, hey, I would love to have somebody in my life, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of the things that I learned from my authority, they said, your picker is broke. <laughs> your picker is broke. Okay. Your picker is broke. And look, it, it rung true in my spirit because I was trying to pick this one and that one. And God, hmm. whenever I stop trying to play, uh, I want this, I want that. Yeah. God put her in my life hmm. when I put my eyes on the Lord, and it was beautiful. And you know what? I love it. She is, without any doubt, a Proverbs 31 wife. Hmm. Without That's great. any doubt. Yeah, I love every, it. Every, every word of Proverbs 31 rings true in her. Oh, thank That's- you. That's great. That's a good compliment, Susan. That's good. That's something good right there. That's <laughs> I love it. So you guys bonded, solidified a little bit of a relationship over the cow incident. <laughs> yeah, and then I was in, and I was in a commitment of running the house, which we call it the Overseer in okay. Kentucky, and. Um, Anyway, I was uh, I would hear a song and think about Gary, and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to pray for him. Like, I don't understand it, but then it kept happening, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, like, uh, do I like Gary? You know. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, we ran into each other again, and we were everyone in the mission is uh, super like, oh, so good to see you hugging everybody, and yeah. me and Gary wouldn't 
wouldn't look each other in the eye. We like shook hands, and um, anyway, then then I had to. We both had to ask permission, but I was in this commitment, so we had to we had to wait five and a half w- months. Okay, and um, you know, like we wanted the Lord's blessing. Uh, we never talked uh, about liking each other, which was super strange, but we both knew in our spirit what the Lord was doing. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, well, can we just get one message to him? And they were like, no, if it's from the Lord, then you have to have faith and trust the Lord. Yeah. And so we, we walked through, which seemed like forever, but 10 years ago, yeah. you know, I mean, when you put it in perspective, it wasn't that long. Right. Right. And, uh, it was worth it <sighs> because we wanted the blessing of the Lord and we wanted mm-hmm. to be obedient and, and then we began talking, and uh, we moved to the same center, and got engaged, and got married, and um, and you know we're super blessed at the Freedom House. We've been blessed with um, being able to expand and build a home for Gary and I. But yeah. um, you know, my stand on verse I said it earlier is First Timothy six six that godliness with contentment is mm-hmm. great gain. Mm-hmm. And I realized that my whole life I was never content in any situation, and now. I can honestly say that I'm content. Yeah. I mean, if if you want me to sleep on the couch, that's cool. I don't care if you want to eat this food. It, it none of it really matters yeah. at the end of the day. And and we we spent almost our whole marriage living in a room, and and that was okay, yeah. you know. And yeah. I didn't really know the, what the Lord was going to do, but He's just blessed us tremendously. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're and we're we say we're blessed, but what we really want to portray is that we're grateful. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. I love it. Well, I would love for you guys to share, um, and these are stories to brag on God. And you guys are always so great about quickly pointing all the glory to Him. Um, but I love you, you guys do just have such an example of faithfulness. And what it looks like, what a life looks like to be surrendered to the Lord, to have Him come in and restore and redeem parts of our life to to really be the healer. Um, but there's such a story of faith that um, I told you before we started hitting record that our heart with the podcast, that we just want to share stories because we're all just ordinary people. And that's not a... Mm-hmm. a derogatory mean term about us. It's just, man, that's who God is, but God chooses ordinary people to do extraordinary things and and to live a life of faithfulness. And I think we are encouraged. We encourage one another when we hear stories of what God is doing and of his faithfulness. And you guys, I know we could sit here and probably record for three months (laughs) nonstop of stories and testimony that you guys have had about how God has just provided when there seemed like there's no way, it didn't make sense out of the blue. Would you just take a moment and share a couple stories with us of just how you've seen God work and move um, at the Freedom House. And like I said, I know we could you could share a bazillion of them, but a couple that maybe stand out to you. Yes. Can I start with this one? Absolutely, Gary. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that is beautiful about what happens in Freedom House is when people come into the ministry, uh, you see them, uh, they come in the first day with their head hung down. You see them set up on the front row. Mm-hmm. Uh, during our worship sessions and stuff, and they had their head hung down. And then uh, it's like they, they're like, there's no hope, you know. And they're there for two days, and then you kind of look, and then you see them. You see them with their head up looking around. Like, this is different. This is what I've been looking for my whole life. And then after they're there for like three days, uh, we'll do like another worship service. We do one every night. And yeah. after that third day, you see them. They're in there with their hands raised mm-hmm. and lifted up. And that, to me, that's a story of faith. It's an illustration because I believe in that three-day thing. I believe that he died, he rose again. Mm. I believe that with all my heart. Yeah. And I believe that God is raising up dead and dead mm-hmm. men and, and dead women every day. Amen. So, yeah. That's faith. I love it. And what a cool, you just get a front row seat to that over and over again. I, all it's the amazing. time. It's amazing. We, yeah. we, we see him move, um, like, especially the newest people there. We always say if we need, if we have a need, Yeah. tell the newest person, we call them probies, okay. um, tell the probies to pray for that need. And so uh, we decided like on a whim, uh, just because we're fun, you know, uh, <laughs> let's have Taco Tuesday every week. So, you know, we got to have something on the menu. I love it. So we have Taco Tuesday, which we have taco meat, but that's about it. So what do, what does that look like? I don't know. We'll just 
whatever. And yeah. so we, we said Taco Tuesday. And literally the next day, we didn't say anything to anybody else, but the Lord brought how many burrito shells? Like 500. Oh, so <laughs> that, the, for a these lot things of happen Tuesdays. a lot, you know. Yeah. And, um, but anyway, we tell, we'll say, oh, you know, there's something special. And, um, we have people all the time that they'll say, I was praying for this and I didn't even tell anyone. <laughs> That's pretty cool too, you know? And I mean, yeah. it may be like a, a pair of purple shoes with yellow shoelaces. Who would pray for that, right? But there's the Lord just to <laughs> encourage the faith in that person. But when when we started Freedom House, um, for about nine months, we had $732 and uh, one vehicle and no food yeah. and a vision. And to see what the Lord has done. Uh, with providing beds and bedding and and everything everything and help um, over the past five years is every day is a miracle. Like I just sometimes walk around the property and say, "When do, we didn't have rose bushes here before, and look yeah. how beautiful they are." Yeah, and um, just every everything that we do, he's always right on time. We say, um, "Oh, we we need to go here." Gary had a vision from the Lord to go to the. Um, impoverished areas of yeah. the parks yeah. locally because um, he metal detects and I want to steal his thunder, but he metal detects and talks to the Lord and he was over in a park and there's just a lot of um, darkness around. And he yeah. said, we need to bring some light here. And we partnered up with some different local churches and we had our first event last month in the Malden Park and 12 people came to know the Lord and we got oh, to give food away that's and they amazing. played music for four hours. Yeah. And then we, we have one in Zenith, Missouri, and then we have one in Kennett, Missouri. So the whole summer we're going to do these evangelism events. Amazing. And and watch the Lord move. And I love it. Let me say this too, yeah, if Gary, I can. Absolutely. One of the scriptures that inspired that is uh, 2 Peter 3 uh, 5, 2 Peter 3 5, I believe, where he says, A day is like a thousand, and a thousand is like the day. Hmm. Uh, the Lord is not being slow about his promise, as some of us might think, but yeah. he's being patient. Yeah. Uh, giving all those a chance to come to repentance and, and, and to have the opportunity to come to him. And so. I believe that when when God shows us things like that, we should take every opportunity yeah. to remember that He was patient with me. Yes, yeah, and uh, He He waited on me, and so I, I believe that it's an open door for us to be able to go and uh, expose people to the gospel and love it. It's such win a cool. souls for the Lord. Yep, that's amazing, Susan. I want you to. You said something really important when you were just talking about the prayers and building faith, and sometimes God will answer specifically purple shoes with yellow shoestrings. Can you talk about that? I think um, to all of us listening, I think we all wrestle with, does God hear me? I'm praying for these things. Is he listening for whether we've walked with the Lord a long time or whether we're newer in a walk with him, or maybe we've walked away. Can you just give some encouragement or share a little more about just the importance of of praying for things and just how God hears us or just anything that you want to share along there, those lines. There's a scripture that scripture that says that he bends down mm, to mm-hmm. listen to us. And I just I always have that vision whenever I'm uh talking to the Lord like, wow, I just can't even believe that he would bend down and listen to me. Yeah. But he does he does and um I would say the biggest uh the biggest thing that I know of that happened is that my sister prayed for me Hmm. (laughs) for over 20 years. Yeah. And she just prayed, Lord, give me my sister back. Hmm. And um, now I'm running a ministry married to a preacher, and it just surpasses our prayers when we're just faithful. Like, we just wait on the Lord. His timing Mm -hmm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. He he breathed the moon and the stars. He knows, like, the perfect timing for everything. Mm -hmm. But um, we could talk about financial blessings and food blessings and clothing blessings. But it just happens every day that— you know, we 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 get a lot of people that come with just the clothes on their back. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of uh, larges and extra larges, but when you get that size 48, yeah. it's a little more like of a um, challenge. Yeah. And so we, we have this little area where we keep stuff and we just say like, oh, Lord, you know what we need. Yeah. And, um, and you open the door and it's like, I didn't even know we had these put back, yeah. but look at that. It's everything we needed and that, that happens often. Yeah. You know, I love that. So to anybody listening, whatever it is, big or small prayers, keep, keep at it. God does hear you. He is bending down and the answer might not always look 
uh, it, well, it often, it never really looks like our timing. <laughs> I feel like that is, right. but and it, the answer is not always how we might want it to be, but he is faithful and he hears us and he, he wants to give good gifts to his kids and bless. And, and he knows what's best. And so sometimes whenever he's saying no, it's because he has something so much better yeah. in store or, or in the plan. Uh, if you just keep keep your eyes on him, like, like, and you know, don't get discouraged if he's you feel like he's not answering your prayer because he's hearing and he's orchestrating this perfect plan. Absolutely, to, to, because he loves you and he just wants to bless you and just give you this great life. You know? I love it. Gary and Susan, whoever wants to tell, if somebody is listening, um, you you said like there's not a lot of advertisement for Freedom House. It's a lot of word of mouth. Right. Um, and Susan, I know you've shared many times that everybody knows somebody. So if somebody's listening and they need help or know somebody that needs help, what is a good way for them to get in contact? Where do they go? Where can they find? Or if they just want to know more information about Freedom House in general. Well, the the easiest way is uh, we can use the internet. Okay. Uh, so that you could kind of maybe just see, like, well, I just want to know more about that. So we have a website that's freedomhousembtc.com, okay. which is, stands for Mission Bible Training Center. Okay. And then we also have a Facebook page and, and, and an Instagram page, and all of those things will direct you to our phone number, to directions, uh, to the right place to like uh, see if this is a fit for you yeah. or your loved one or to get the information to your loved one, you know, um, and, and the Lord will orchestrate that at just the right time. Like we could just keep talking about to um, plant that seed. You know, we, we do a lot of social media, mainly just to just we just want to put up smiling faces. Yeah. Smiling, yeah. changed faces that have the light of Jesus and. Uh, we know what it's like to be in that dark place at three in the morning on the internet, yeah. and maybe that'll come through, and that's that's the time. Yeah, you know, we don't yeah. know. We we yeah. never know, but we've had a lot of people that got to know more about us through these outlets, and um, so anyway, Freedom House on on in Holcomb on Facebook. Or you can go to the website. Awesome. And we'll make sure to link them for you guys listening in our show notes. We'll have the links if you want to find more. Um, is there anything before I switch over to our other friends that have been patiently waiting over here in the <laughs> <in> studio <laughs> session? Is there anything else that you want to share that we did that I didn't ask about or anything else you want to cover? You two before. Yeah. The, oh, Gary and I, Susan. Yeah. You, it's okay if not. I just want to. You asked one more thing. And I'll yeah. Be quiet. It's good. No, <laughs> it's good, Gary. All right, look, you was asking about the faithfulness part of it. Yeah. Uh, when she was talking about this vision to go to the parks and stuff. Yeah. When we, when the Lord showed that to us and then we moved on it and started yeah. sitting and talking with the other churches, yeah. can you, would you believe that it wasn't like a few days later and we had all the sound equipment show up that we didn't have? Wow. Yeah, we did. A to go van, into the parks to yeah. be able to <laughs> amplify it where people could hear it. Yeah, I love he it. He sent speakers, amplifiers, and, and it was just this church that was, uh, mm-hmm. that had no more need for it. And it was just what we needed to be wow. able to, to do that. Mm-hmm. That's great. I love it. You know, he, we moved on the faith, and and he moved. Yeah, to provide. To provide. So it happens. Good when you're obedient, just stepping out, and he'll he will he'll provide. I didn't want to leave that out. No, I love that. Gary. <laughs> That's great. So I'm going to ask you guys this, and then I'm going to give you guys a precursor that you know I'm going to ask you in a minute over here. But Gary and Susan. Um, the show is called Now That's Something Good. And so the last thing we like to ask everybody when we bring them on the show is what, tell us something good. You've already shared with us so many good things, but just tell us one more good thing. It can be anything. I tell there's like no qualifier. It could be a good product, a good show, a good thing, a store, anything good. There's no, but tell us one more good thing, each of you. Something good that's I would you. say now that, that what is, what is, I know that now that's something good yeah. is, um, is seeing lives changed, oh. <laughs> um, and the uh, the people that look like that the, they're throwaways. Hmm. You know, I kind of said that um, they've been working on a room in the church, and I said, yeah, they were the throwaways. You know, and um, that's pretty cool yeah. that uh, God God never turned his back. So yep. uh, anyway, we just want to encourage people all the time that there's something good in you. Yeah, that's great. And uh, there's something good in you, and there's something good in you, and there's something good in you, and don't you forget it, and don't you let the devil steal that and lie to you anymore, <laughs> because um, the Lord is good. Amen. And and he's, he's within us. Yeah, that's good, Susan. Gary? 
I would say something good is what's happening right now. <laughs> that God has uh, given us an opportunity to be with you guys, and yeah. you guys are like an extended family to us, and we want to thank you guys. And the, it, it's good to be able to, to, to do what we're doing right now to, to glorify the Lord. And uh, as, as Susan said, there's something good in each of us, mm-hmm. and each of us have a story, and yeah. uh, that's good. That God is, is good. good. That is definitely something good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> Okay, friends, Ridley, how fun was that? And let me just tell you, it's going to get even better. So make sure to come back next week for part two, where we hear from more of the guys that were there with us sharing their story. And let me just give you a little preview warning, grab a box of tissues because you're going to need it. It's so good. I love hearing Gary and Susan and hearing their heart and what they're doing. It's just so incredible, the work that they're getting to be a part of. If you want to find out more, I really want to encourage you this. Go check out the show notes. We list their website there, their in, their Facebook and Instagram accounts. I promise you, they are accounts that you want to follow and just keep up with what they're doing and what God is doing. So make sure to join us back here on our next episode for part two of our conversation with Freedom House. Have a great week and go share something good with someone around you.